Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. Welcome, welcome. Wow, what a great crowd. Welcome to my kitchen, y'all. It's so nice to have good Louisiana cooks uh, right here in my home, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to be, be good to you today with the food. I want y'all all to meet Carol LeBlanc. Carol's from Raceland, y'all, and in fact, she is the reason we're all here. She sent me one of her fabulous Louisiana recipes, and I think that chicken and sausage gumbo that you did is one of the oldest, probably one of the oldest traditional recipes in Louisiana, right? Yeah, it, everybody did chicken and sausage gumbo. Not if I added oysters to it or something on a Sunday, but this is one of those uh, dishes that's famous here. So my mission today, y'all, is to try to take that great recipe and modify it just a little bit so that we don't change the flavor because nobody in Louisiana is going to eat a bad gumbo, right? right. Huh? Who's going to eat a bad gumbo, <laughs> huh? So uh, my mission is going to be uh, uh, to do that. And y'all, let me tell you, diet is a four-letter word here. Yeah, four out of word, nobody dies here, but we do, we want to remember that we are what we eat, right? Okay? Right. We are what we eat. Everything we put in here eventually will come back to tell us something <laughs> later, huh? So uh, anyway, that's our mission today, y'all, to try to see how we in Louisiana who love food, love it, and live it every day, how we can make it just a little bit healthier for us. And Carol was uh, good enough to give me a lesson in her gumbo so I could come back and try to duplicate the taste and reduce some of the things in it that's not as good for us. I brought my little handheld movie camera to our house, y'all, and this is what we saw. I want y'all to join us so we can see this. That was pretty good what we did, huh? <laughs> Hey, Jack, how are you? How are you? So good to see you. Oh, my God. Oh, I tell you, all these Cajun houses smell great food. Well, it should, John. I've got some of that great chicken and smoked sausage gumbo on the farm. Oh, it's just really like good. Chicken? It's just fantastic smelling. Oh. Oh, you know the smoke in here is so incredible. Is this a local uh, yes, sausage? Yes, it's bourgeois. It is. They uh, have real great sausage. Oh, uh, I'll tell you what, I'd love to get a little taste of this. Huh? Well, let's go on and eat. I've got the <laughs> table set. Oh, you got it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Carol, this is absolutely fantastic gumbo. Thank you so much. Oh, really good. You know, you and I have something else in common other than just loving gumbo. We're both half German. I'm V-O-L-T-Z changed to F-O-L-S-E in French, and you're Schweiss. Did they murder that name, they too? They did. Oh, gosh, did they? It was originally Schweister. Right, right. C-H-W-E-I-T-Z-E-R, some, something like that, and they changed it, and it's my understanding that it was uh, the priest when they baptized it. If it was a Spanish priest, they kept the S. If it was a French priest, they dropped the S. And, um, yeah, they just, they went phonetically with everything, and I'll tell you, they murdered a lot of those names, or at least Americanized those names. Now, 
Schwess was your father's side of the family. What about your mother's side? My mother was a landry. Uh, in no. fact, the gumbo is, in fact, what you're eating now is my grandmother, uh, landry. This is her famous recipe. Well, she was a great cook, let me tell you. Which was uh, very unique uh, because back then it was really, really fresh. She would actually kill the chicken the morning of the gumbo, wring the chicken's neck, uh, yeah. and then feather it, and then she would save the little yolks that were still in the chicken from the, uh, from the uh, chicken yeah, right. eggs, Unlayed. and she would drop them into the gumbo, and they would boil in there, and we would fight for those years. Well, you know, that was traditional, too, because uh, because back then, when you raised your own chickens and the, the eggs that weren't laid, those yolks went right into the pot, and I'll tell you what, the kids really did uh, love. Uh, now, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's really a uh, fantastic cooking. Uh, I can just taste to ruin everything else. And now, now, you were telling me that they lived to a ripe old age. My God, that family must have been huge. Yes, they had um, five daughters and one son. Of course, they're all deceased now. But they lived to be 98 years old, both oh, of them. They were married for 75 years. Mm. And uh, in fact, they were king and queen of their parish uh, one year. And uh, it was just, we were so excited, and they were too. You know, yeah. she had her fiero and all yeah. that. I mean, you know, she was really a queen. Well, I guess when the family got together, you needed, a, you needed to rent a hall. Yes, right? we did. Now, you know, I notice as I walk around your house, there's so many treasures here uh, uh, from the family. I mean, you've done a good job of keeping those. I've always been proud of my heritage. And uh, for example, the little garmoche, it's what they used to call it. Right. And a little china cabinet in my kitchen. I have um, some very unique pieces. My mother's little tea set, and I also have um, uh, a dozen uh, collectors from the washing powder. Oh, yeah. Uh, they collected the golden wheat powder. Oh, everybody had that, those, yeah. And, yeah. and I have that in there from my wedding. And also uh, my grandfather's chair. We've got that, the little wicker chair. And uh, I've also uh, have my mother-in-law's uh, chest of drawer and a little makeup uh, set, which she was uh, storing uh, paint cans on. <laughs> and I had went ahead and had it redone, and now I'm using it. So it's well, really more, more more great things were saved out of the sheds uh, uh, by then. Right. You know, you have done, as I mentioned, a really fantastic job of preserving your past for future generations, and I want to congratulate you for that because every family in America ought to be just like yours. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> this is great gumbo. I tell you, this thank is really you. wonderful. <laughs> Y'all, I tell you, that, that was really great going through your home because it was a museum of the family past, and, and you're fantastic. But before we talk any more about that, I have an added surprise for all of you because all these great Cajuns, Cajun food, I brought in here to entertain you today, Anne Savoy, and I tell you, y'all have to meet Anne Savoy. Uh, Mark Savoy is her husband, a great, you know, accordion player and builder in Louisiana. Anne is the producer of a brand new album, Evangeline May. In fact, is there it is right there. How you doing? Hi, and great to see you. Let's give her a hand, y'all. <laughs> Now, uh, now you came from uh, you came from Eunice today, the heart of Cajun country. But you were originally from Richmond, Virginia, and I want to talk about that a little bit later. But I want you to kick the show off. You have a good song for me? Yeah, let's play a little tune. Now, y'all, the Magnolia. Hey, uh, Anne Savoy and the Magnolia Sisters, y'all. Hey, hey, <laughs> let, let me hear it. Go ahead. <laughs> You see how special y'all are, huh? Diane, thanks so much. Hey, we're going to talk to Diane a little bit more in just a minute. But y'all, we have a fantastic dish we have to try to uh, modify today. And uh, I guess moderation is everything in life, right? And the same is true in food. And uh, so one of the things that I wanted to do today was to take this great recipe of yours that you gave me. But you had some fantastic stories about cooking in your area. I mean, you come from an area of great cooks, right? I mean, there's no 
searching out ingredients. There's raw ingredients everywhere in the world. Even the sausage you put in this gumbo is from, what, an old sausage maker somewhere in the area there? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Where did the sausage come Bourgeois from? Bourgeois Meat Market. Which and what is, makes um, that sausage special? They are just, they're known for their sausage. I mean, the sausage and the hors d'oeuvre is just exceptional. Everybody yeah. goes there to have that sausage. I mean, everybody uses it in our area. It's so, it's, uh, so it's really, really a great, uh, great flavor. A lot of heavy smoke, yeah. a lot of heavy fat. I did bring huh? some here. Yeah, I know it. I got yeah. it. Uh, and, 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 and you know, another thing about your gumbo versus mine, and I want to talk about that a little bit more too, is that your gravy is a little bit thinner than mine. You're doing a gravy from the bayous of Louisiana. I grew up on the river. So my gravy tended to be in my gumbo. My soup tended to be a little thicker, a little bit more of a roux flavor. But uh, uh, is that traditional? That, uh, Ours is tradition. Yes, it is. It's more like a, a broth of the soup. It's yeah. the way I've always eaten it. I've, I've never, uh, I've tasted the one on the river, and it's quite good. It's wonderful, but it's more like we make our cheese. Oh, you're pretty diplomatic. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all, I want to show you while my, uh, I had to get everything sauteing there, but Rex, y'all, did I introduce Rex? Rex is not only the cameraman, my cameraman here, he stirs my pot. Stir that bowl right there with the camera. Stir it, see that? He's there, there you go. See how he stirs? There you go. Look, he stirs all that. Uh, here's the sausage she's, uh, here's the sausage she's talking about right here, that good bourgeois sausage. This is the one from the river, y'all. This is from the bayous. This one is a heavy smoked sausage that's smoked with pecan wood. So you can see we have a lot of traditional sausages to choose from, but very fat. In fact, if I press it, I think you can see the amount of fat in that sausage. This right here is a nice lean turkey sausage. See that right there? Nice and lean. You don't see much fat in it. And in fact, I'm going to throw that down into the pot. But Rex, also, I want to show everybody that the chicken that I'm using, I've removed all of this fat off of it. And of course, I've, I'm using just the, uh, the chicken that has been trimmed of all that excess fat. In fact, that's about how much fat, Rex, if you want to take a look at that. This is what came off of the rendered fat of that chicken and the sausage about that much and but yet I'm adding my smoke from the sausage and all of those wonderful flavors right there and I'm gonna stir that around this is pretty, doing pretty good so far huh huh Linda pretty good so far huh huh huh, huh? What, uh, uh, great not good what do you mean uh, great huh? this is wonderful stuff by the way you know there's an anniversary in the kitchen today huh tell, tell them about the anniversary yeah, it's that uh, Mary and Greg Roderick are celebrating 32 years of married bliss. Hey, congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. That's great. Okay, y'all, I have my onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic, and you know, when I try to cut back fats in a dish, cut back sodium in a dish, one of the things that I try to do is to always make sure that I put color in herbs. You know, you can always build up with things that are really good for you. So I need a little bit uh, uh, more of the herb flavors in here, basils and thyme. You know, in Louisiana, we normally like to put a lot of chicken fat and a lot of sausage, a lot of smoke fowl flavor. But, you know, we can change some of that by putting some of the natural herbs in our cooking. It's really going to be fantastic. So y'all, now that, oh, I wish y'all could smell this. Can the camera smell it? I think the camera can smell it. Okay, now the roux, another very important thing. This right here, y'all, is the oilish roux, and I'm going to sprinkle it into the pot. By using the oilish roux, which is normally made in Louisiana with uh, one cup of oil, one cup of flour, cooked to a nice golden brown. It's our thickening agent. Today, by taking the flour and putting it in my skillet and putting it in the oven at 375 degrees, I get the same thickening ability, but of course, I lose the fat. And by removing the oil from that roux and the fat from the chicken, Linda, 56% less fat in this dish. 56%. That's why I look so good, baby. Huh? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I got that down in here uh, uh, right now. Now I'm going to add my okra. I'm going to add my okra in here. And then, of course, my chicken. I'm going to put all... Now, look, I also cube chicken and throw it down in there because that's going to really uh, start to cook quickly. And then all of my nice... Um, chicken meat in here. Now, of course, I eliminated, as I said, the fat, but I didn't eliminate the great flavor of the chicken. So you have all of that cooking in there nicely, and that's going to cook and start to brown. And y'all, what I'm going to do at this point, let me show you the uh, gumbo that you brought over, okay? I have that gumbo right there. Take a look at that, and I want to get right down in here and take a look at this wonderful, wonderful 
gumbo, and your, yours is made with the original where you have a good roux in it, right? Yes. And then you're using the bourgeois sausage, right. uh, a little bit of green onions, onion, yes. celery. Yes. Mine yes. is really yes. doing, yes. oh, I tell you, smelling good. Okay. Michelle, I need somebody to give me a little bit of a carafe so I can get me a little bit of hot water here. Now, you watch my pot. Just look at it while I get me a little bit of this nice hot. Now, I'm going to get me some nice hot water here because I could use a stock. I could use a defatted stock in my, in my recipe. But since I have all of these nice flavors in here, I'm just going to use water. And if you wanted to use a low-sodium chicken broth, it would be just magnificent for you. But just go ahead and look. The minute the water hits this, the roux is going to start to thicken it. Oh, look at that. Doesn't it look fantastic? It looks just like the original dish. Now, you know, don't go telling people, well, y'all, let me tell you how good this gumbo is. I took 50% of the fat out. <laughs> you know, you don't have to tell anybody that. What you want to tell them that for, huh? Huh? That's like saying, y'all, guess what? I got holes in my socks <laughs> today, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, make a good gumbo like this and a little salt substitute. I'm going to bring this to a good rolling boil. A little pepper. How much pepper? As much as you like. To taste, I always say it, to taste. Uh, just kind of whack that around in there. Oh, oh. See, look at the noise I'm here. <laughs> oh, was that you? Huh? Okay, a little bit of that pretty color in here, y'all. Now I'm going to finish it just as Carol did. I'm going to put my green onions in parsley. Oh, is this beautiful gumbo or what? It looks great. And, of course, if you wanted to use a low-sodium chicken stock in here or chicken broth, you can get it from the store, and it's even going to add that much more flavor. Or you can make the stock yourself and just put it in the refrigerator and take the fat out overnight, just like I cooked last night and took that out. Filet powder, y'all. Filet. Rex, you got to get a good close shot of this. This is a little bitty jar of filet powder, the leaves of the sassafras tree. And look, get a close, close up of this. This is one of the greatest thickening agents and flavoring agents in Louisiana. Most people say you shouldn't put filet powder in a gumbo until you serve it at the table. And I agree with that. But I'm going to put a little bit in that too. Huh? This is my strategy here. Huh? What do you think? Filet? I think uh, before the dish is finished. Before the dish is yes. finished, that's what I do too. I don't give a dog on what they say. Huh? <laughs> now, y'all, you would let this just go ahead and cook away for a little while. And let me show you what it looks like when it's done right here. Oh, I tell you, look at it and weep, Carol. <laughs> huh? Look at it and weep right there, Carol. Hold on one minute. Huh? Hold on one minute. That stuff. Oh, look at that. And I got that good lean sausage in there. Oh. I tell you, I wish I could stop the show and eat myself. Uh, let, me, uh, let me serve up a bowl, and I'm going to bring it over there. Oh, look at that, look at that. Mm. I'm going to bring this over because, and, and David, would you mind serving a couple of those up for me? David always serves for me here. Do you have a spoon over here? Yes, I do. Oh, oh, I need one more, one more quick bowl for down here. One more really fast bowl. I can't just, no, maybe a little bit more. Than that. <laughs> I want it fast, but I want it full, huh? There you go. That's that. good. A little bit of that. And um, Linda, you can eat some too, baby. Well, I appreciate huh? it. Thank That's you. That's for yours right there. David, I want to send something to the anniversary couple too. Y'all, isn't that a good-looking gumbo, though? Really good, huh? All right, now another very special dish. And I tell you what, this is a... Uh, did I, I, and I did tell y'all about, uh, uh, about the fat in, the, in, in that recipe. 56% just by doing the oily roux. And, of course, the sodium, 67% less sodium by using water instead of putting all that salt in there and no Excellent. stock that had a lot. Isn't that good? Excellent. It's very I bet it is. You don't think I'm going to make bad gumbo here today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all, now I'm going to start off by making a, 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 a wonderful crab cake. Oh, I love crab cakes. Are you ready to look at this? Um, I tell you, when you look at this, you're going to know why we love to live in Louisiana. Take a look at this, Rex. I want to show y'all all of the different uh, ingredients we have to work with when we're making a stuffed crab here. This is the jumbo lump crab meat. This is the back fin crab meat. This right here is the claw crab meat. I think the sweetest of the meats. And of course it comes from this crab right here. We've boiled it already, but that's the blue crab of Louisiana. And I have all of this beautiful meat. Oh, that looks great. I wish I could just stick my face in there right now. But, but anyway, I have all of the meat right here, Rex, right in the bowl right there. And what I'm going to do, y'all, is to start, I'm combining all of the meats because I love this flavor and I love the, the whole crab as well. So in this little skillet, if Rex gets out of my way, 
Uh, I love him, you know. I love him. Okay, y'all, in my skill, I'm going to throw a light margin. Light margin, right in there. And since light margin is 50% water almost, I'm going to throw in my onions to, to keep it from, from uh, melting away there. So I'm going to just go ahead and throw it in. And Ann, I need you to give me a little, uh, a little music here. What are you? What are you? Oh, I was going to give you something to season it up. Sorry, hey, so throw, Evangel and Mrs. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Is this low salt? I mean, is this low sodium here? That's I'm going to put a little bit. Why don't you, just give me a little something while I stir up this crab and all that here. Y'all, this is, huh? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's good music for my stirring. You know, I, I, I have to tell y'all, Ann, uh, that, uh, the, the, the theme song of this show is on that album right there, Evangeline Made, right? That's right. That's the Cajun All-Stars, and that's also the song we just did. I recorded with Linda Ronstadt, and there's some great artists on there, John Fogarty, uh, Rodney Crowell, and they're I'll all tell you what, recording it's Cajun music. That's why we chose it for the opening of the show, huh? <laughs> really great. Y'all, I've sauteed some onions, some celery. I'm blocking all this great shot for Rex here. I put some onion, celery, bell pepper, and garlic into my beautiful crab meat here. You see that? So I'm going to stir that around. You got that for me there, Rex? Oh, look at that. And I've combined the white, the claw meat all together. The important thing, even in crab meat, y'all, is that we add a good supply of vegetables and herbs. So now that I have my garlic, onion, celery in here, I'm going to make my stuffed crabs by adding, again, some nice basil and thyme. That's good for you, right? Uh, good for good herbs. The more the better, right, Linda? That's right. Okay, Natural. now, <laughs> egg substitute instead of whole egg. Huh? Now that's just basically an egg white colored yellow. But that's all right. It holds. It holds everything together. And here's the egg white not colored yellow. Huh? <laughs> but I tell you what, less fat, y'all, and it does the job for us. And a little bit breadcrumbs right down into this. Again, salt substitute right into the dish. And y'all, this is my recipe for stuffed crabs. I'm, of course, I'm modifying it myself. Mm -hmm. Because of the light margarine and egg substitute, 75% less fat in these stuffed crabs. 75% less. And the salt substitute, 60% less salt. Can you imagine that? Just by making those little minor changes, uh, you can have that kind of a, a difference in stuffed crabs, which we're going to try to eat in Louisiana every weekend. You know, we love, in crab, yeah, in crab season, we want stuffed crabs every weekend. Now, you know another thing? I know a lot of folks, myself included, who like to put mayonnaise in stuffed crab, just a little bit oil to hold it together. Imagine if I put a big spoon of mayonnaise in here. Oh, now what I'm going to do is grab one of these crab shells. I want to show you this just quickly. I'm going to put it right down in there. Uh, see how I stuff that, huh, huh Carol? Huh? Mm -hmm. I know you want me to come home with you, baby, with this one, huh? huh? <laughs> Where's your husband, huh? Uh, oh, there he is, right in the front row there, huh? right in the front row. Oh, there he is. Huh? Uh, I'm just kidding. You can take the crab home, though. Huh? Okay, y'all. Now, this would go into, I'd stuff about six or eight of these, and I'd put them in the oven. Fact is, I have some here. Rex, you ready to walk over to the oven here? I have some in the oven all ready for y'all here. And uh, you just want to put them at about 350 after this stuff. Now, these are the lightest, leanest, meanest crabs you're ever going to have right there. You know why, y'all? Because we sacrificed no flavor whatsoever. And, David, you got a little plate there? I'm going to give you a... I'll go ahead and put one there for you. There you go. Hand that back to somebody. Okay, y'all. And what I'm going to do right now, I want to thank everybody for coming here because I want Ann and them to take this show out. Thank y'all so much for coming. And y'all tune in again next week. Let's go. Come on.
Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please call 1-800-973-7246 or send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana, Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fultz's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order.